Hello everybody and welcome to another sketchbook tour. I can't believe that it's a matter of weeks ago that I said I hadn't finished any and now I've finished another one. What's happening is because I use so many at the same time um, and do a page or two here and a page or two there, they'll all get finished together. So if they're started together, they'll be finished together. So that works. Um, I that doesn't bother me a bit I'm very happy to continue doing that because it gives me variety and it also gives me different formats and pieces of paper to work on this one is obviously a square format it's by Diane Raverly for Ranger Dilutions <coughs> excuse me about nine inches square 29 and a half centimeters square and it's smooth paper it's lovely I adore it and I've just finished it and the fun thing about it is how I've got different techniques. I'm just going to show you the spine there up very close. I'm sorry about that. As you can see, the first half looks fairly normal. The second half looks very interesting and bulky. So please do bear with until we get to that. Um, let's get on with it, shall we? As I said, it's a square format, super smooth paper. Love this little envelope in the front where I can pop things if I'm working on them. I tend to work from photos more than anything else in my studio. So having the photo there with me, if I go to my art group, pop photo in, it's brilliant. Now, I started off with one lot of media. I'm a mixed media artist, but I started off with a lot of Neo Color 2. Now, Neo Color 2 are the ones that are water soluble. I'll grab my Neo Color 1 because they're closer. This is the Neo Color 1, and this is not water soluble, but this is what we're talking about. So it's water soluble crayon, looks the same as this, which is why I grabbed it. It doesn't matter, it's you can't tell them apart just by looking quickly. You've got to read on there one or two. So number two is actually um, probably a very unfortunate turn of phrase. Neo Color 2 is the water soluble one, which means that you can draw with it, as you'll probably already know, and then you can wet it out with some water on a brush or a water brush and get different effects. I started out mainly with those actually until I developed a resist technique, which I now use the Neo Color ones for. That's a totally different story. However, I started this on the 8th of March 2023, so it's just over a year old. And this is the technique that I tend to use with the Neo Colors. There is some color pencil in here as well. <coughs> Excuse me, hay fever season. Perhaps just looking at the pines has given my allergies a bit of a kick. And um, yeah, so there's a bit of colored pencil in here, but there's a Neo Color substrate and this is the sort of technique I use and you'll see how it changes through the year and with different sorts of um, of media. Again here, Neo Colour and Neo Colour and pencil colours, pencil, coloured pencil, sorry, all the way through. And I love the fact that I can then, I can wet them out. And when you wet out a Neo Colour 2, it changes from being a very waxy, slick surface to actually more like a watercolour or gouache. <coughs> oh, I do apologise. I'm so sorry. Um, and then you can go over the top with things like fine liners. And uh, these are acrylic markers, coloured pencils, and all sorts of other marks can be made. I also like the fact that even though I wanted this to be quite light and bright round here, I could mix the colours and make them a bit more muddy and muted around here where I wanted them to be muted and in the shade. So it just, they work really well. And yeah, you can see so this really beautiful early spring time sort of vibe or midwinter with colours on the snow. And like I said, to go back in with a felt tip over a waxy surface, you think, well, no, that's not going to happen. It totally can, and it totally does. Um, this one's gouache, actually. This is a the end of a art challenge that I did for, with Natasha Newton, and um, this one was the prompt was tracks. And I thought, well, maybe people think of animal tracks through the forest because it was all about woodland and forest. But I thought, we have a train near where we live here in North Germany that goes through the forest and it has tracks. So I'm going to do that. First train I ever attempted as well. I daren't show it to a train spotter. They'd know, <laughs> they'd know all the things wrong with it. Here I've done some Neo Colour Bird sketches and so forth. Just very, very quick studies. A fox. Don't know if I like him or not. I think I, I like him. He's a lovely fox. But 
his mouth is a bit weird so I'm not sure about that landscapes love landscapes and more birds I decided more fox practice was needed I'm not sure if I've actually achieved anything um I live quite a long way away from the sea so when it's grey outside and I would predict that the 19th of March 2023 was quite a grey day in North Germany actually and um, <laughs> yeah because I painted the sea in a bright day and I tend to do that. This is my neighbour's paddock they've got a little farmstead there and again all with um, really nice um, light and shade. I love the the shadows you can put on that. So, yeah, um, the thing is with the shadows and light is it brings a lot of dynamic to your picture, but you can only tell the lights there if you add shadows. Otherwise, it's just a flat green. But when you put the shadows in, that really makes this look even brighter and sunnier. And I like the fact that, again, mixed media gets the job done. So you can see the texture here in the sky with coloured pencils over the top of the neo colours and my trees and things like that. I can see looking back on this even after only a year that my style has changed yet again. This is a totally more primitive style, but it still has its place and I still like it and I will still use it. And uh, this one here is a Melanie Chadwick challenge, actually. The prompt for this one was um, soil. So... Yeah, lots of, again, lots of texture. You can have a picture where there's not actually much in it and make it look really, really good because you can add all these textures. And that's, again, this is why I love mixed media. I used to be a mix, a pure artist like watercolour or oil or acrylic, never mix anything together. Um, but I was always constantly looking at my work thinking, geez, I'd love to be able to darken that with a bit of fine liner or I'd love to be able to add some texture to that because it's just blank and um, the textures I've got there I'm not happy with. Uh, like, for example, if you're doing a watercolour and got that lovely bumpy paper and you think, well, hmm, I wonder what running a pencil over that would do and would that make that look more pebbly? It does and you can and that's why I thought this is ridiculous. I'm just going to give up and do mixed media. And it's a thing, so we're good. Venice, don't know why. I found a picture I liked and I thought, you know what, I'd like to paint some of that. So this is Venice. Now that's done with eco line markers with coloured pencil and, and pan pastel over the top. And uh, yeah, just again, all about the shapes and the textures and the colours and the light and get a shadow in there if I can. Bird feeder in our back garden and the birds that come to it. And I like that too. These quick sketch birds, these are great and I can use them for other things as well. Normally, and this is the bird that I'm working on with my patrons this um, at the moment, this week actually, but I don't know when you're watching this in the future. So probably that video will already be up, but we've started on a blue tit, which is a really beautiful British and European bird. They occur in a few other places too. Sadly, not North America. But um, yeah, this was the popular choice. So we're doing this one at the moment in collage. And yeah, so here's a quick sketch. And here's, you know, you can spend so much more time. And again, that's why I love mixed media is because of its versatility. So my cows, they were in the same paddock, but the horses were in just a slightly different view. And our house is over the back somewhere. It's, yeah. Again, this springtime look to the fields and this bright, bright green, everything being new, the trees are not out yet. I just love it. The tr this grass took a little bit of a while, but it was worth it in the end. And again, I love the dark uh, colour towards the observer, which in this case is whoever is standing in this spot, as if I was standing under a tree looking out across the morning grass and it really was quite early in the morning the shadows are all um quite long actually and uh, yeah another town somewhere in germany again it was about this light that caught my eye this one was our backyard our kitchen garden and little greenhouse that we had a few flowers again just experimenting with shapes and a, a lighthouse I have a particular technique that I teach on my Patreon called uh, my resist technique. And you'll see it a few times. I'll point it out as, I, as we go along. But it's how I get these rocks 
it's how I get the texture on these buildings and it's how I get the texture here in the foreground and all around. But yeah, it's really, really easy. I'll bring it up a little bit closer there so you can see that. The rocks, they just they just happen. And the texture on the building just happens. You just scribble over the top of the texture you create. Um, this one, it feels flat and horrid to me. And the reason for it is because um, we were getting COVID, Rob and I. And I didn't realise at the time. I just didn't feel like doing any, any painting. But I thought, well, I, I'll just give it a go because I like to do it each day. But yeah, it's, it feels in, uninspired to me. This one's okay. And again, this one's okay. Um, just some areas around where we live near the windmill. The windmill's actually over about here. So this was the field beside it. And I enjoyed doing all of the light and dark again. And moving on from light and dark in the field, this is a uh, the building of the ha Harbour Police in Hamburg near where we live. And um, yeah, it's it's a beautiful building, and I love the light and shade. So I had to had to sketch that, but I love the fact that I could just you know almost realistic feeling, but then just go for this very very quick scribbled roof, and it works together. Um, love that, and my neo color trees. These are my neo color trees. I have others. This is my Zig Clean brush marker tree sort of leaves and things like that so every different medium gives me a different tree again here nice just just scribbles and so forth like that didn't like that very much feeling lousy but wanted to paint something so I went out onto our terrace and painted the fountain and it's it's all right it's a picture um some things work and some don't and that's the thing and that's the point about a sketchbook is you can do it and look back on it and say well that's a memory not a great one or it's a memory and that's a great that's fabulous but at the end of the day, you shut the textbook and you put it on the shelf. I like that. Love the distance and different, again, different textures, all sorts of bits here. More um, resist technique on the wall there. Very easy to do. This one had a complete makeover because I sketched it and it's half my gouache trees, half resist technique up here. Then I did this quite dark brown or quite rich brown and it looked awful so that had to be gray so I just went over it again love that about this then there's a gap between the 28th of April and the 10th of May where absolutely uh, nothing happened and like I said I normally sketch daily for that between this picture and this picture I did absolutely nothing I remember watching King Charles's coronation on the 6th of May and I was just sitting on the so I didn't know where I was that morning. My husband had tried to find had to find everything that I was meant to be wearing. It was oh, it was awful. And I sat there on the 6th of May, which was a Saturday, watching the coronation and just relaxing. And all of a sudden my head cleared. It was almost as if somebody had pulled up the blinds and my head cleared. And I thought, oh, my goodness, I'm back. I feel me again. And that you know a couple of nights later I sat down at my desk and sketched this um so that was that was great um that was sort of the end of that bit and hopefully the end of it all together but yeah not not pleasant so this is the first one that I did when I was back in the saddle and you can probably see some technique differences actually and here too the technique has changed a lot it's a lot richer and I like that and I've got all of this um, moodiness starting to happen. I've also bought in some um, Ecoline um, liquid watercolours. And those are the ones, if I can just grab one here. It's not the right colour, but this is what they look like. They're in a um, little pipette bottle as opposed to the markers, which are brilliant too. But you can refill these with that. I've got separate videos on that, so I won't take up time here. But I've started to add these really moody layers. Sadly, they're not color light fast. So in a sketchbook, brilliant. More of my resist technique here, and you can see it in action, how it makes this. This has got so many different colors in it, it's not funny. I just dumped the whole lot on, but it, it allowed me to get this light into the, into the building where the setting sun is coming through the end and the texture on the wall I particularly like. And amazed how pink and gray work together to make that 
warm stone that, that I was really after. So happy with that. And this one here too. You can see the difference between some of the earlier trees. Can't even find any bloody trees. There's some. Very, very primitive, quite light and bright. And then I've started to achieve what I was after. I, I was happy with those, but not happy. It wasn't what I was after. Great for a quick sketch, but not what I wanted. Not me. This is more in my style. These two pictures are the beginnings of what I would call more my style, as you will see further on in the book. And here again, same same mediums, but different, done differently. And more of my, this is all my resist technique at work. This is what it looks like. So yeah, it's a worthwhile thing to know. Hate that. Must have had a relapse. Hate that one. It's exactly what it looks like. I just don't like it and I don't like the way I've I've drawn it. Um, I mean, the drawing's okay. It's the colours. It's just no. It looks overworked and horrid. Um, I might even do it again just so I can compare this one I made up out of my head because I really wanted a windy looking day where the trees look like if they were moving. But I didn't want that super, super light primitive look that happens early in spring this is starting to get into the darker area of um, the end of spring just before summer because we're at the 29th of may so yeah really like um i like the movement through the trees and i like the movement in the sky uh, and yeah a lake in sweden this was a tutorial for patreon just some techniques about that and then this again a bit bright it's a bit bright for my liking now. Funny how when you look back on things, I was happy with it at the time. I mean, I'm happy with it now. It's just that I've done other things that I like better. I prefer this. If I had to save one of the, if this book fell in the bathtub and I had to save one picture, it would be that one, not that one sort of thing. So really loving this, loving the moodiness. I still like the texture that you can get in the trees. And this one here is, again, my resist technique and you can see the texture on the stone walls and the roofs and all of this area here where if you had to paint you sketch in a lot of the grass it's just too much and it's too fussy this is a farmstead near us lots and lots and lots of different techniques going on there which made me realize that out of the two that I might rescue or not bother this one's kind of got the two different sorts of trees in the one picture, which also works. Got lots of these beautiful farms here in North Germany. It looks like a children's toy set, actually. I love it. Here again, I've got some resist technique on the trees, but um, gouache leaves, which is also nice. And the building is a little bit more subdued than the other one. So, yeah. This one's Cambridge in Britain, in England, actually. I really wanted to do reflections on the water and I wanted to do a willow tree. So they're all there and the muted colours are better too. Still a lot of neo colour too. So even though the colours that you see when you look at the sticks, I mean, let me grab again with my neo colour ones because they're close. That green is as bright as bright, but you can tone it right down. There are ways and cunning plans. And that one, I don't like that one. That's another one. Love him, though. <laughs> it's There's lots of neo colour in there. And this was my tutorial. It was my bird of the month on my Patreon in June. So we had, um, yes, the swallow was, I put it to the vote and my patrons decided they really wanted to learn how to sketch a swallow. So this was the guy. Again, love the shadow. It just adds something to it for me. And just a little fun landscape, because that was such fun. I did another one for no reason. And a seascape. Yep. Another one. Texture. It's about the texture. I cannot, I cannot stress that enough. Another Patreon tutorial about buildings, and in particular the German buildings we find around us here. And again, knowing how you know filling these trees in a little bit more so keeping that same resist technique with the neo colors and the colored pencils but filling them in so that instead of the early year quite open foliage I've got this now this is happening because we are oh gosh I haven't even I haven't date stamped that 
but around somewhere in Ju July. So it's going to be a little bit more sort of filled in and the grass is not quite as bright, bright green. And then we've got some shadow here. I tend to have my sun coming in from the left. The light comes in from the left on most of my things. Do you do that? I mean, do you have a favourite side or do you tend to paint what's there or what happens there? If I can choose, I'll have the sun coming in from the left. This is our neighbour's shed and garden. Honestly, it's all so cute. I just can't stop painting. And these trees, always nice, especially if you've got to fill in an area. It's really quite useful for that or in the background where they're a bit muted. And this here is all done with the um, Ecoline liquid watercolour in the pipette bottle that I showed you. But this is my own special mixture green. I've got a tutorial coming out on that very, very soon. This green here. Another lake in Sweden. My cousins went to Sweden and I painted a picture of their photos. So we've got some gouache tree action here, fine liner here, just brushes with liquid watercolour and then liquid watercolour finished off with zig clean markers up the back. Which um, again, I like the fact that I can put it all in the one picture. I think that needs a bit of spraying. Yes, it certainly does. I haven't fixed that. Um, because I could see it here. I thought surely that hasn't gone mouldy, but no, it hasn't. Just a picture. Sometimes if I don't have anything in mind to do, I'll just sit down and make marks and they'll eventually turn into something. And the they turned into this. I love paths like this, the way it can lead your eye down to the water and you imagine that it goes around the corner and onto some sand and stuff like that. So... Yeah, that's quite nice, actually. But yeah, I must fix that or I'll lose my whole sky. It's all done with soft pastels, that sky. Oh, and do I? Yes, I've, I've got some work to do in this one. That's why this was in there. Um, owl practice, because I love owls. And again, it was our bird of the month for August. And I think, yeah, that's the one we chose. One, not him in particular, but something very, very similar to that one. More this sort of aspect, but his colouring is what I ended up choosing. This was a Landscape Art Club challenge. It was Sintra, I think, somewhere in Portugal. And they gave us a photo to paint from. And this is what I came up with. That was fun. Actually, that was the week. Yes, that was November. November was water month, I think. Don't quote me, but I think November was water month and we were doing sea sparkles. Um, one of my students requested sea sparkles. So we did that and I thought, right, well, this is the one for me. Love this. When I compare this, okay, this is November, but you compare it to the colours in spring. This is all lovely and light. But this, I prefer this and I prefer this style and paint oh, these grasses and then glazing them afterwards. It's just such fun. I find it fun, but I like doing these trees as well. So, yeah, this was another tutorial uh, for uh, water month, which was all uh, reflections on the water. And then we had another one a couple of weeks later, which I practiced on here with um, oil pastels for frosty effects. And this one was another, that's a Landscape Art Club tutorial. That one was Inside Passage, Alaska. So yeah, in November. And here I was practicing with the possibility of using soft pastels as a mixed media medium. I'm sure I fixed it, so I have no idea what that's there for. Yeah, I did. Um, because there's not a lot of soft pastels used in mixed media the way I want to use them. I certainly couldn't find anything, so I had to sit down and make it up for myself. And this is what I came up with, that using soft pastel all over and then coloured pencil over the top of that, uh, some gouache, this tree is gouache over the top of that, then the branches are made using fine liners and the all of the stuff in the front here is using um, very, very fine acrylic markers, but all over the top of soft pastel. So, yeah, very happy about that. Some of my sheep look like tarpiers. Oh, well, one looked like a corgi the other day, so I guess it's OK. Another tutorial that we did, and um, this was a two part tutorial with a snow scene which looked a little bit Spartan. So I showed 
my patrons how to add some things like this and all of course these all important shadows if you've got the sun that bright and something solid in front of it it's going to cast a shadow and the one thing I tell my people all the time this isn't this is the other frost tutorial that we did one thing I tell my students constantly is that your work doesn't have to look realistic unless you want it to if you want to be a realistic artist the world is your oyster all it has to really look is believable believable is important so like I said there's no way you would get a low sun with, that's that quite bright over snow with these solid things and not have some shadows so it's important we learn how to do them frost that's again the same neighbor's shed as you saw back a bit ago and here again these are just some studies where I was experimenting with the possibilities and the limitations of what I could do with soft pastel in a mixed media setting this has got some oil pastels over the top which thankfully I seem to have fixed this is lots and lots of tangled sort of stuff and trees leaning in the wind, the sort of November weather you would expect in the country. This is the heathland and a nice sunset sky. Again, nothing like pastels for getting that dramatic sky. And um, yeah, oil pastels, resist technique using neo colours and soft pastels as well. So whole lot here. This one, I think this one's in Suffolk. We lived in Norfolk for nine years, so there are some that are in Suffolk. Uh, that's the next county across if you're not in England. Um, it's all in a part of England called East Anglia. So, yeah, really pretty countryside, actually. And lots and lots of liquid watercolour here. And I think that's a pastel sky. It's, it certainly looks like it. Hard to tell sometimes. Right, when I turn this page, you're going to see a little bit of a change because this is where we get to the thick part of the album. So I decided, I don't know why, I don't know what sparked it off, but collage had to happen. And if you have a look at some of my other videos, you will see where I've experimented with it. But in this one, I started to get serious, just about using bits and pieces of paper scraps. Um, I also make cards and that's pretty much basically paper collage. It's nothing else. That's what it is. So I wanted it to look more arty. I didn't want to use dyes to cut the collage. I, everything had to be artistic and cut out by hand. So this is one of the ones that I did for spring. Oh, well, actually, it's 19th of January this year. So, um, yeah, that was around spring and I loved him and his little frog spawn and everything else like that. This one is a landscape art club challenge. And again, the, I don't paint people very often, even when they're statues, but he, he was fun. He stood still for me. This one, it's all about the texture in the front and the background. I didn't have a lot of time and I wasn't really feeling them in the mood. You can probably tell actually when I just needed to get marks on paper. So this was one of those times. And then I started this German castle, which was always my fa father's favourite. And I thought, all right, well, I'll do that then. And I got so sick of it. I, I thought, right, well, what can I do? And I thought, well, you can stick a bird in front of it. And instead of me looking at the castle, it's now a bird looking at the castle. And my magpie and all of these leaves, you can see some shiny bits there. That's nothing I've sealed them with. It's um, some of these things have come from my card making supplies where there's been a bit of paper left over. I've used them to make leaves. So some of this has got the media on that I use for cards. That's all that is. Some, most of them haven't. These I've just made from scratch and colored them in with colored pencil over the top of a, a fairly inky substrate. Pigeons in London, I love these. And it, there had to be some sort of litter on the ground. So I found these um, in a cut a catalogue that came through our mailbox on a Sunday. And I thought, well, I'll cut out the sweet wrappers, crunch them up with glue and see if that works. And it does. So that works well. This one's got a bit of a wing like a griffin, which I'm not that keen on. I prefer this one. I did him first. I don't know why I do that. I'm right handed, but I'll sometimes start on the right hand side end up sitting in everything because it's stupid and then I'll work to the left I don't know all nice um, collage leaves here and I wanted it to be internet instantly recognizable as London without 
too much detail because I wanted the detail to be on the pigeons. So it's nice to just have some scrubby background buildings and giving myself permission for not adding detail to absolutely everything. And this is the thing with a picture like this. You've got to accept that that's in the background. And if you put any detail on it, you bring it forward too far. So the idea is this is the focus. This is the background and leave it alone. Love that sky too. It looks very rainy and, and moody. Moody and texture. I'm getting buzzwords. If I ever think about getting a tattoo, that'll be how it is. There's actually a video on this one. And I shall pop that up on the screen on how I finished this one off. So um, I've got the, the main tutorials on my Patreon, obviously. Um, but I did do a YouTube video to show how I finished the bird off. So I'll pop that up and you can have a look for yourself and see if you like that. Because it's a great technique. All these little rocks and bits and pieces. This is St Michael's Mount in Cornwall, just off the coast of southern England and seagulls love seagulls crows again this is the if you want to make an england this is the recipe that you have to have for springtime there has to be a plowed field there has to be some daffodils there has to be some rooks and they've got to be looking down on a country church that's the recipe somewhere in the back of the church somewhere on the village green there'll be cricket but you can't see that in the picture um, this is all about the rooks actually and the lovely feathers and colours they've got. Back to the continent and a uh, lighthouse. Love those. And I love the way I can get the light here. Again, have a, sorry to do this to you again, but back here, it's a world away from the light that you get in the spring there that I achieve with that particular set of mixed media to the light that I've got here with this particular set of mixed media. And I love that I can do both, depending on how the mood takes me. This was another Landscape Art Club one, Welsh sheep. So little cut out, they're all collaged. So I cut them out and stuck them into the landscape. Do the landscape first, and then you can decide which elements you put in it, or you can just make elements and see how things fit together. But this one had to be, had to have some sheep. Enjoyed making those. And this is my one that looks like a corgi. It really, yeah, it, it's really not a good look. Head's far too big for the body. But again, it's a sketchbook. This was in Cambridge somewhere. So, yeah, just walking along. Um, it's all right. I don't mind it. It's a, it's one of those ones. Again, I didn't have any particular direction. This one is one of my favourites in the whole book. I absolutely love it. Um, all gouache in the background and then coloured pencil and markers in the, in the foreground. The house wasn't even there originally. I just popped that in because I, it needed something. But I love the movement you can get through the trees and that sky. I don't know whether that house would be nice to sit in and be comfortable if there was a roaring fire and plenty of people probably on your own on a night like that. Not so much. My chicken. I loved him. Her. This is a her. Loved her. Little chick here and all of this grass and straw that had to be put in pretty much by one piece at a time. I've dirtied the pages quite a bit, but some of it's rubbed off onto here. Love, love doing her. She's just lovely. I would like to have some chickens. Um, this one was an interesting one because I wanted something a bit different. So I thought, well, I would add a collage flap to the front and fill that with birds and then have lambs in the background. So here again, quite moody, which I think is the style that's here to stay, to be honest, by the look of this. and. You can see some lambs, but no birds or open it up and so forth like that. That was it was fun to do. Another frog. This is what a frog looks like, looks up at in the middle of the night at the moon or collage. Different again, textures and rocks and all this thing. A starry night. Van Gogh may have been inspiring me a little bit there, but um, yeah, fun. And I like my frog. It was a particularly nice piece of coloured paper that I'd made for my card making with some spray inks. This was another one where I didn't like it. I painted the house, 
as you can see, the trees have been scrubbed out at least twice. It was just all wrong. And then I thought, well, I want something spring-like. And then I thought maybe some sort of birds and then some sort of blossoms. And I thought, well, wood warblers, I've not done those before. And yeah, I do like it now. So it's two wood warblers sitting in a crabapple tree. And if anybody asks, that's how I intended it all along, which shows you can have a picture. And if you're not keen on it, just use it as a backdrop. And I like that about collage. I never thought I would. I always avoided collage because it always seemed to have a political message. And there are still some that's just too, I'm not an abstract artist. I don't get it at all. I like it in places, but I don't understand it. And I don't want to do it which is why I love art, because we can all do what we want. Um, this is what I like to do. And I thought, well, this is collage. But, yeah, I can I can live with this. My swan, love my swan. And this is what I mean. If I wanted to cut one of these out, I don't know which one I'd sacrifice. I may keep the swan, actually. Really liked him. Like the water, like the grass. That's all gouache. And the swan, although is white, you can't paint a bird, you can't collage or paint a bird white, white. It's got to have some areas of shade so that you can tell that the other areas are white, if that makes sense. It's, it's quite a balancing act. I adore this one. Again, I wanted to do some spring flowers, but I wanted another cottage with my resist technique and things like that in the background. And that fills the background quite quickly. So you've got the the gouache sky and background here and a little bit of yeah resist going on there and then all of the rest is cut out and collaged and of course it had to have some sort of good tablecloth so I found some patterned rose paper which I've actually got quite close to me here it's just a piece from my card making stuff I thought well that makes a tablecloth and this is my latest one this is a, yeah there's, it's one of those iconic pictures that you see from England is a blue tit. And it's, again, like I showed you before, this is the one we're doing in class. But this one here, the one that started that, blue tit pecking at the top of the milk bottle because these milk bottles have got foil tops on them. And then it's fairly thick foil, to be fair, but a bird's beak is more than up to the task of making a hole in it. And then the cream is right up to the top of the bottle so they can get in and have some. So I wanted to do stonework, I wanted wood, and then I thought, you know what, it needs a little bit of floral sort of action around the door because these cottages have flowers growing around the door. Then the plate, the door plate, the handle, where the handle is. Yeah, very happy with him. That's why I can't get the book sh sh closed because these are quite raised. And last but not least was another landscape art club challenge last night was Hertfordshire, I believe and a really nice house in Hertfordshire, and I had to do that. I think that was one that Onma Wynne took, but don't quote me there, but I believe this was her photo. Absolutely loved it, and it was, yeah, super. Uh, started out with gouache, all gouache, and then coloured pencil over the top, fine liners, acrylic markers, and you cannot beat acrylic markers and tombos for getting this foreground grass. Really nice. And it gives you some sort of perspective. You're standing in the foreground. Okay, that's it. And I'm not using this page. What I'm going to do with this page is I'm going to journal carefully because it's got lots of lumps and bumps. I will attempt to journal what's gone on in the album and what changes are where. Album. Sketchbook. Good grief. First, I spent all morning trying to call it a textbook, and now it's a, a, an album. I think you know what I mean. And that's it, folks. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time and staying with me till the end. If you have stayed with me till the end, thank you so much. Um, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and do check my other videos out. And if you like my style, any of them, because <laughs> they're all there, um, do consider joining my Patreon and because there are lots and lots of videos up there now. So it's fabulous. I, I'm hoping it's good value for money because it's as little as six euros 50 a month. You can access all the videos. Um, and um, yeah, there's a few other bits and bobs there too, which make it fun. Nice community developing over there, actually. Uh, so yeah, all of the details will be there in the description box below. 
thank you so much like i said enjoy your day i hope you have some time to get some art in at some point just make marks it's really important keep those art muscles pretty limber and i shall see you next week with another favorite five i think see you then bye